Hey guys, welcome to the stream. I just realised I don't think I actually put any starting music on uh, today, which if I didn't, I'm really sorry. I can't see any playing anywhere, so if you've got it twice now, I do apologise. Um, first of all, let's see who was first. Uh, today first went to Doc HX, so Doc, if you're still watching, welcome, good evening, sir. That was at 26 minutes past last hour, so 45 minutes ago, 50 minutes ago. Um, D Lees was here as well. Uh, Peris per Periscopita? Periscopita? I'm gonna guess. I'm not sure. Uh, Vogue on PT as well. Um, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Uh, who else is here? AKB James. Uh, good evening, good sir. Good to see you. We need to have a chat. <laughs> and the key's here saying hi, Jay. Hi, man. Good to see you. I hope I'm gonna see you at London because I think I've found a venue finally uh, for the London meetup. Uh, Dowge is here as well, Jono Warren, uh, Huey, uh, Huey, again, good to see you, Jono, again, good to see you at the last weekend at the meetup, it was good to see you guys there. Uh, Van Storm as well, uh, Duelum's here, so it should be considered an Olympic sport to check out a desired keyboard on Shopify. Man, that was crazy, that was crazy. Um, Rain says, hey, hey Rain, good to see you. Uh, what is that, the 8008, mate? Yes, it is. This came in two, three days ago from MyKeyboard.eu, the guys at MyKeyboard.eu. Uh, they were kind enough to send this with my Handabyte set. Um, so it has got some dust on it, so I apologise. I'm having awful problems with my top mount camera today. So it's on like a boom arm that comes over, and for some reason the little latch that holds it into place is slipping constantly, and I don't know why. So that's why things aren't quite square looking down, and the camera may twist and sh move around over time slowly. So if it does, we'll try and fix it during the stream, but I'm really hoping it doesn't. <sighs> uh, Will G3 is here as well. Uh, Nostalgic34 says, hello everyone, happy big Sunday. Yes, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. It is Sunday, wherever you are, I hope you've had a great weekend. Uh, Kakan says, hello, is this Microsoft tech support? Yes, it is. Uh, please turn it off and on again uh, and do not call back. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ikarusto as well, C. Jansen uh, says, hey. Tuxki as well is here. Already got my train ticket, says Anaki for the London meetup. Nice, nice. Uh, would you recommend a custom GMMK for someone with a low budget? Yes, they're really good boards for the price. I think they're really good. Uh, definitely worthwhile having. Uh, Handabite, yes. <laughs> Handabite came the other day uh, in all of its colourful glory. Uh, Acidic Pure, thank you very, very much for the four month streak. Really appreciate that. It's Derek, subscribe with Twitch Prime, and Quirdenka, subscribe for 10 months with uh, with Twitch as well. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Uh, what's up with the stream? Uh, there shouldn't be anything wrong with the stream. Let me just check, make sure everything's going okay. Ooh, so the health of it looks good. I've got no dropped frames. Uh, stats look really good. Oh, one dropped frame. I've dropped a single frame. Uh, 30 frames a second, 6.1k bits. Looks all good here. <clears throat> Just booked my flights to London. Nakwa, finally. We're going to get to meet in real life. I can't wait. Uh, at least the box is nice. Yes, it is. Uh, needed to restart the iPad app. There you go, dude. There you go. Uh, um, are MX lock switches any good? I've heard very mixed reviews. They're absolutely terrible, but they're really good fun. So uh, I find with lock switches, if you don't press them quite firmly, they don't stay down. So uh, that could just be the lock switches I have. I've only got them in two boards. Um, can't recall which boards are in. I know I've got one in my Alps board, but I can't recall which boards are in. But I do have one in another board, but they're not great. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> That's how you thank me by showing me, me your, my greatest enemy. Sorry, Queer, but uh, it's not that bad, isn't it, Handabite? It's nice. Sorry if that was loud. I do apologise. So, yes, Queer, the, 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 the current plan is for me to stay in London for two nights. So, for those of you who don't know, we're talking about the UK meetup. The UK meetup happens on the 28th of March. It's my birthday on the 27th of March, so me and the wife are going to go down on the Friday the 27th. We're going to catch a show on that night, we're going to have some drinks, 
go back to the hotel room. Um, then the next day we're going to do the uh, the, lead, uh, the London meetup uh, venue still to be confirmed. I think I've got there earlier on this weekend with them though. Um, and then from there we will uh, do the meetup. I'll be there the Saturday night as well, and then I'll be coming home on the Sunday. So yes, that's my current plan. <coughs> Uh, so I could use some locks from me, Macropan. Absolutely, do it. Definitely do it. Uh, Stash Builds is here as well. Hey man, good to see you. We're on the level two of the hype train, guys. Let's see if we can push that up a bit. Um, LBI base as well. Thank you very much for 12 months, dude. Really appreciate it, man. <laughs> Jay's getting pegged for his birthday. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> Uh, Grimaniac as well, subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Choo choo, hype train. All right, okay. Um, so, we're going to be doing a few builds today. So, there's two builds on the docket. The first one is the ISO macro pad. Um, for those of you who haven't seen this, I'll unbox it later on. We're going to be using for that a uh, Hirose switch. So, for these guys that haven't seen these, these are old Japanese switches. Uh, they were only available in um, certain keyboard things. They're not even keyboards, they were like soundboards, Yamaha soundboards or something. Uh, but really, really interesting. We will be using a certain Enter. The colours might give it away uh, as well for this. So that's all prepared. We'll also be building the uh, Honeyboard 60, which is going to be in ISO layout. Now, the case top I do have is HHKB. I haven't checked that this fits, but it's a 7U bottom row, so I'm hoping it does. Um, this is a carbon fiber plate that was made for it. Now, sadly, when I got the plate file, there was a couple of things I didn't have on the file, which were all of these holes around the outside, which is where it's sandwiched. So I've had to drill those in manually today as well. Uh, so there is a tiny, tiny bit of damage just up here, but it won't affect the plate in actual usage. Um, so yeah, but other than that, it's all looking good. Don't drill carbon fiber as well, guys. It's a really bad idea. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do it again. <clears throat> uh, Calfury unsubscribe with Twitch Prime as well. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you. Almost there to the uh, end of level two. <sighs> what ISO enter key might that be? We shall see. We shall see. Uh, Vogon PT says ISO enter gang reporting. In. I've got two of them. I bought one in the group buy, and Quer and Eggle were kind enough to send me one. Um, just be I think I think it was the first one they had or something. They sent it to me to unbox live on Top Clack, which was quite good fun. Um, so yeah. The NT <laughs> I didn't realise it, it, the the camera showed that far over, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's been seen before. Everyone's seen these. Come on, focus camera. There you go. Lovely, lovely, lovely keycap. So I can't wait to use that. But that will go on that macro pad later on. Now it's only one key, so it won't take as long to build that. So I'll build that at the end of the stream. I'll show the honeyboard in a second, but in terms of the PCB today, we're going to be using the Mechanisk uh, Wilbur WT60D. The D edition does have ISO support, yay, which is perfect for me, perfect for what I need. Um, it's also got the flex cuts in there as well and everything else, so you can kind of see how it moves. But given the fact that we're using a fairly rigid plate, that probably won't make any uh, difference. So the mine did come with a little scratch in it. Uh, I don't know what caused that, that was there when I got it out of the box. It doesn't look like it's cutting through anything, so I'm not too worried that it's going to damage anything. Uh, and as you can see, that's how it will look. Delise uh, continued a gift sub that they got from Jayshuff. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for that. Jay is a professional leaker. Yeah, I'm great at leaking stuff. Uh, what lube would you suggest for Zelios? I'm thinking of going with MCG129. Uh, MCG129 is really, really nice. I've used it on a couple of different builds now. I, I think personally I prefer a really, really thin coat of 205 grade zero uh, with 105 on the springs. So that, that's how I prefer it. Almost at level two of the hype train, guys. 84%. Uh, so thank you very much to Stash Builds Boards for continuing their gifts up as well. Leaking happens with all of us to all of us with advanced age. Hey, I'm not that old. I'm I'm pretty young. Maybe I'm not as young as many people in this hobby, but I'm I'm still pretty young. In terms of stabilizers today, we're going to be using some C3 stabilizers. I've got tons of them. I haven't used them properly yet in a build, so today is the day. Uh, we have a seven new space bar. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. What's the word for this? I've forgotten the name of it, wire, that's the name, uh, and some 2U wires as well, uh, and that's just gonna sit nicely in there later on. Uh, there's also a bag of bolts. These are what hold the board together. These are really long, so I don't know if you guys can see how long these are, but these look really, really long. So if they are too long, I have some shorter ones that we can change those out for. 
Uh, also got some rubber bumpons. Focus. <laughs> Uh, those go uh, between the plate and the PCB, uh, the plate in the case, as far as I'm aware. So we'll check those out as well. We're going to be using stock knowledge switches. That's to break these in. So the plan for this is to use these switches, keep the board at work for three weeks, break them in, desolder the board, lube these switches with PTFE powder, rebuild. Uh, so that's the plan for it. Allen Key also came with the board. So thanks very much to uh, uh, to the guys. Uh, MTB who make the honey board uh, for throwing in a good tool as well. Uh, looks like we hit uh, level two, so thank you very much for that. Uh, emotes are on the way. Thank you very much for that, guys. <clears throat> uh, and then I'll show you the board. We do have something else we're going to do before we build the board, uh, so we'll take a look at it. This is the board. I've shown it off on stream before, but this is absolutely something else. <laughs> Uh, just in terms of colour, that is just cold metal with uh, with warm hands leaving the marks there. So we're going to remove this plate, we're going to put my carbon fibre plate in. I'm going to go with the WT60D build. As you can see, this is something else. I've never quite seen anodization like this, or as smooth as this. It's unreal how smooth this is. Now the board was B stock. It does have one small scratch just there, uh, which is sad. But you know, it's one of those things. Oh, guys, you're going to make me take this off here and put it on this, aren't you? That's what you're going to. I just feel that's what you're going to do. You're going to make me take that off there and put it on here. Right? Is that what you're going to make me do? Uh, what colour is that? Is Midas Gold? It is gold. I don't think it's called Midas Gold or anything. Uh, there is also one mark on the bottom as well, which is really difficult to get it to show on camera. You might just be able to see it just here. Um, but there. <sighs> you already knew that shit was coming, lol. Yes, maybe. I kind of have suspected it. Um, I was hoping you guys were going to let me put hand bite on this. Look how bright it looks in the light. I have to tilt it out of the light to so you guys can see it properly. Um, so yeah, so that's the board that we're going to build today. Before we do build that though, I do have the prototype of the CU65 on hand. Uh, so I've been given this from uh, Caps and Locked. And we're going to take a look at that first. So just before I do the build, you guys have seen what I'm building now. We'll just take a quick look at that. And then we'll crack on with the build. Beating a dead horse with hand bite. Yeah, well, maybe you guys might pick another set that I have. How, how about Oblivion or uh, Space Cadet or Mizu or Modern Dolch? I'd even open DMG for it, but DMG would look horrible on it. Yeah. Um, Bento Waves? Don't know. Let me know what you think, guys, anyway. Any giveaways soon? Uh, yeah, we will have some giveaways soon. We've just finished one, John Lag, so there'll be another one in February. Uh, we aren't quite there yet, but we will do one. Hello, top of the clack. <laughs> Golden ticket. Chocolatier is what I meant. Yeah, I, I can take Chocolatier off the Satisfaction 75 and put it on there. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah. All right. We, we'll, we'll do that at the end. Um, you need to pick another key set for that board then, though, if that's what we're doing. Um, right. Anyway, let me get the CU65 out. So... I was actually sent two. I haven't unwrapped these since I got them. So you guys are going to see it live. I think that's the CU75. And I think that what's changed since last time, just looking at this here, is that the foot goes all the way across instead of just to the corners now. So I won't have a look at that. Um, if that is the case, I'll post some pictures in my Discord later on a bit. But we will take a look at this one. Let me just see if I can find uh, something to cut this open with. Put a hand bite on the satisfaction. Okay, okay, good idea. I'll put a hand bite on the satisfaction, and then uh, and then we can put GMK chocolatier on on the honey board. Okay. This is nicely wrapped, to say the least. Ball wrapping. Okay, I finally 
think we're in there. Okay, guys, this is the CU-65. Uh, I notice it's missing a stabilizer instantly. <laughs> no stabilizer in there. Uh, this is a hot swap board as well, so PCB looks good actually. Let's see if you guys can see that up close nicely. Machining quality looks pretty okay. CU65 logo on the base, good for infill, it's nice and deep. Plenty of screw points, I assume that this is uh, almost a tray mount, it feels very stiff. Yeah, so I think the PCB screws in, uh, in there as well. Full length foot, it's pretty good, pretty solid. It's not going to rock anywhere. So the, the TKO when we looked at that, if you'd have pressed in this top corner, because the foot only went up to like here, it actually tipped like this, but this one doesn't look like it's going to do. It's quite light, uh, which is not a bad thing. Corners look good, fillets look good, chamfers look good. Uh, machinery looks really good. I'm very impressed uh, in terms of that. Oh, so the, key, the, the the plate is integrated. I wasn't aware of that, but the plate is integrated, fully integrated plate. Looks pretty damn good. Yeah, some marks on there, but they're not scratches or anything, guys. Uh, the seams look really nice and tidy. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the seams around here look pretty nice and tidy. They're fairly tight. There's, you can't feel them as such. They're they're, they're visible, but you can't feel them. Looks pretty damn good. Pretty light. Let's uh, let's get the scales out and give it a weight. So, uh, 745 grams, or for those of you in the US, uh, one pound at 10 ounces. So it's pretty light as a board. So there we go. Uh, for the price, I think that's pretty nice. It'd be a great travel board. Um, good board for just having around. I wouldn't use red switches in it personally. They are cherry red so, so there you go. At least they're uh, sock ones. Noxygen's here as well. Good evening. Should we have a look at the other one? People are asking me to have a look at the other one. I think, I'm pretty sure the other one is just the, uh, the TKL that we've seen before. Let's see if we can... Yeah, it's USB-C. There you go, USB-C. That line on there is not a scratch. It's just kind of like um, if I if I do this, there you go. You see that's that's that line that was on the back has gone. If it's come on camera focus, uh, it's just like um, almost like a chalky substance that's on it for some reason. Okay. Yeah, so this is the. Uh, the TKL that we've seen before on stream. Uh, unbuilt, but uh, as you can see, both ANSI and ISO supported, which is the same as on this one. So it's a universal, this one's a universal integrated plate. Uh, this one's integrated as well, but it's low profile when you consider the difference in thickness. That's because this one is a low profile case. The CU65 uh, is high profile, uh, but that foot is definitely a huge improvement. I remember when we looked at this board before that and the, the, the foot only came like here and the, you press in the corners, like hit escape key really hard, you're going to tip the board over. That's a huge improvement. I've got to be honest, I prefer this gray to the black. I think the grey is nicer than the black. Uh, not that the black's terrible, but everything the grey is nicer. Now, the way that the boards fit together is you basically screw the bottom into this top plate. Uh, so it's a 1.5mm thick plate, but it does feel quite rigid because of all the screw points. So, yeah, both boards looking good. I think for the price, these boards are great. They're very good contenders for things like the Master Drop Alt, things like that. So, yeah, definitely happy to see them. Cool. If you guys have got any questions, let me know. I can't, I'm not going to put this one together because it's missing a stabilizer and I don't want to take the whole thing apart just to put a stabilizer in. Um, but yeah, if you guys have got any questions, if you want me to do a sound test, I can record one probably tomorrow night. Uh, one thing I do notice is that there's no bump-ons on the bottom. So there's no bump-ons on the front edge of this where there is on the TKL. There's like a rubber strip. Don't know if that's something that's going to change or if they're just going to keep it uh, as a metal board. Slides around kind of easily, but... Yeah, so good good travel board, good budget friendly travel boards. 
Okay. This versus the Tofu, I'd probably take that over the Tofu any day of the week because it does ISO and it's integrated play. I tend to prefer a firmer typing field than most people. Um, that doesn't mean to say I don't like gasket mounts or anything like that, I do. But uh, yeah, I think uh, a firmer typing field is very much more my preference and it's good to see that those both support it. So yeah, uh, much more contenders for the Mass Drop Bolt and things like that, I think, uh, than anything else. I think my camera's moved. Anyway, okay, so there we go, guys. That's the CU65 and the CU80. Before we go any further, we are going to uh, build the uh, the Honeyboard 60. I can't believe you guys are going to make me take all of these keycaps off of here. <sighs> it's going to take an age to do. Thanks, guys. Thank you, folks. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'll be putting the I'll taking these caps off of here, and I'll put the hand GMK hander bite on there. So we'll build the board first. We'll transfer the keycaps, and we'll put hander bite on the whiteboard. <laughs> Job done. Job done. You know that's why the satisfaction seventy five is there. No, the reason why it's there is because I wanted to use the board, and I've had it on my desk for the past few days. Shouldn't have put them on stream. I didn't think of it beforehand. It wasn't like a conscious decision that if I put that there, you asked me to do it. It was more of a, I'm using that board today because that's the board I want to use. And now you guys have just <sighs> caused me more work. You say Oblivion on the Satisfaction 75. Well, I want to use Handabite, and Handabite's there, so <laughs> it's going to go on that board. It sounds like a you kind of problem, James. Thanks, James. Appreciate that. Really appreciate that. <sighs> Okay, right. So, let's uh, let's carry on with building first of all. First thing to do uh, is lube up some stabilizers and pop them in the board. Now we are going for an ISO layout here, so we need a stabilizer for the ISO key, we need a stabilizer for the backspace key, and we need a stabilizer for the 7U spacebar. And that's it. Just three stabilizers: one 7U and two 2U. As I said before, we're not really color coordinating this theme. I'm just using what stabilizers I have lying around. And those happen to be C3. I've got rather a lot of C3 stabilizers lying around, so that's what we're gonna use. Okay, so we need one for the space bar, one for the backspace, one for the ISO enter. enter. <clears throat> One creative mind here as well. Uh, good evening, sir. Glad to see you on stream. Glad to see you here. I do apologise that my camera is slowly panning down and tilting down. It's getting further and further that way. Um, it was showing this as parallel, and you can see that it's getting wider uh, as it goes off the camera. So I do apologise. Hopefully it won't move too much more. Um, and I'll have to get a replacement boom arm for next week, I think. Okay, so that's the stabilisers we need. We just need two of these two you ones. And then we shall loop these and put them together and then we'll get them in the board perfect okay so for loop today we are using dielectric grease this is the nice thick kind uh, the current brand i'm using is servisol this is the current brand i'm using silicone grease and i have basically a large dollop in here uh, there you go just a large dollop in the bottom of there this is what we're going to use today. Also got some wet wipes on hand because these do get greasy as hell. I'm just going to pull a couple of these out already, just in case I need them. There we go. <clears throat> I want that PCB just for the colour, it's beautiful. you got to be honest, Wilbur does great work. Look how nice this PCB is. duct tape the camera on. I could do, but <sighs> so it's on like a gimbal and then the gimbal connects to a clamp and the clamp connects to the boom arm. So the idea is that I've got 360 degrees worth of movement on the camera and I can raise and lower it. Now that works great and then you tighten everything up and everything stays and then slowly it drops. Now it's never done this before but I've just changed the position of the camera uh, from facing forwards for the day stream uh, when we do top clack of the main show to then being the overhead camera for this show. So. I don't know what's changed, but something clearly has. I don't know. Perhaps the boom arm just needs a clean or something like that. Uh, we'll take a look at it after this stream this week. Uh, the other thing that C3 stamps come with is they come with little washers already as well, and also a little tool to do them up with as well, which is quite nice. 
It's got a nice little touch. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put the stabilizers together. I like to lube my stabilizers uh, pre-built. So what we're going to do is put them together, and then after we've put the wires in, we'll lube the sides of the stabilizers to make sure that everything moves nicely. Before we do that, though, we're just going to put some lube on the stabilizer wire. Put a nice blob on here. We're just going to spread it up and around the actual part of the wire that's going to go inside the housing. Make sure there's a good coverage on there. <clears throat> I'm going to take the housing and we're going to push that into the bottom of the two holes in the housing and then we're just going to clip it into the front of the stabiliser housing. I've forgotten how tight these were. Gosh. There we go, that's in. And we're just going to do the other side exactly the same. Always easy to add more lube later on guys as well, so don't add too much at this sort of stage. Just add a thin layer and if it doesn't feel right you can always go back and add more later on. Uh, man is prepared, I always wish I had wet wipes when I'm leaving but I never picked them up from the store. Yeah, I've always got them on hand. Um, there we go. It took a while to clip in but it went in eventually. <clears throat> my pods are all slowly being replaced with Wilbur PCBs. Wilbur PCBs are excellent. Uh, if there was a version uh, available for every layout that I like to use, then I would definitely be hitting him up um, for more boards as well. Maybe if I ever redo the J01 layout. I wouldn't redo the J01 board, but if I ever revisited that layout, perhaps I'd go to him for a PCB for that. Haven't kept up with the stabilizer game. How are these compared to the cherry stabilizers? Um, so the cherry stabilizers that have, that are out at the minute are terrible. So the cher cherry have redone their molds, uh, or whoever makes them have redone their molds, and they're not as good as they were before. So I think that the fact that the molds were old was in our favour in the community. Um, now what I would say is that these are better than the new GMK and cherry stabilizers but Duroc and um, Zeal ones are slightly better in my opinion uh, so I think at the minute on the market it goes Zeal uh, into uh, number one then Duroc stroke Everglide for number two they're pretty much the same uh, and then I would say C3 stabs and then GMK so those are the four I would put and in that order okay now on to the last one where to buy good stabs in the EU. So if you want C3s, uh, I think the MyKeyboard.eu folks should have them in soon, uh, if they haven't already got them in. Um, failing that, you could ask Faxa, uh, Faxa360, he can get you GMK ones. As far as I know, there isn't any Duroc stabilizer supplier in the EU uh, at the minute. If there is, I'm not aware of it. Um, I tend to buy mine just straight from Taobao. Yeah, all the cherry ones are just fine, uh, Sir Jensen, but the uh, the the newer ones just not as good. So whatever uh, the manufacturers, because GMK and cherry stabilizers are basically the same. Um, they just one screw and one's clipping, but they they are identical in all other respects. <clears throat> and whatever's happened to the, uh, the the factory or the mold, it's it's not done them any favors. Let's let's be honest. Let's. Uh, now they have, they are aware of it. GMK are aware of it, and they are coming up with something new. So they're going to have a new product for us at some point this year. Now they've said it'll be out when it's ready, which basically means it's not ready yet, and they don't want to tell us any more about it just yet. 
but hopefully that will be a positive change to the community as well. We'll have something new from GMK which will help alleviate any issues we have. So now these are all put together, I'm just going to put a thin amount of lube just on the outside of each of the sliders. Now I'm not putting any more lube on the brush at this stage, there's plenty of lube on there, we're just putting a really tiny thin layer on there, that's just to help make sure that these are nice and smooth. Okay, that's one completely done. Take a tiny thin bit of loop here. Okay, just don't want to put too much on. I have sluggish stabilizers. The aim of the game here is to keep them smooth and free flowing, not to gunk them up, make them difficult to move. Would love to see stabs with silencing pads like silent switches. That would be such a huge improvement. Yeah, so I think Rama was working on something that did that. Um, the way that Rama's stabs were designed was uh, was looking like that's the direction it was going in, although there was no official announcement on that. But it would be really, really interesting to see if someone does come up with some silenced ones. It reminds me of the old days when uh, all the Koreans and uh, um, Taiwanese people and Vietnamese people were putting foam inside the stabilizers to prevent rattle and noise. Do both sides? Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> I wonder if GMK fixing the stabs will mean that pre built keyboard stabs would get better. Potentially, potentially. I don't think that GMK stabs are used in pre-built keyboards or cherry stabilizers are used in pre-built keyboards. It tends to be plate mount ones because they're cheaper. Uh, although there are exceptions to the rule. Yeah, it does sound really finickety, uh, Sir Jensen. But uh, it sounds really interesting if you can get it to work. Just conscious I'm taking a little bit more lube. Try not to put too much on here. Just want another really, really thin layer. Okay. Okay, that's those all done. Next job now is to install the stabilizers. Uh, Pitoko says, I'm pretty excited to see what this sounds like. Me too, man, me too. Uh, you never mentioned whether you got your uh, carbon fiber plate that I sent you, uh, but it will need drilling um, slightly. DSA is polarizing, but I love it personally. Ooh, I'm, yeah, I'm not a fan of, uh, not a fan of DSA, if I'm completely honest. I've used Colt to silence stabs, it works okay at best, it's hard to get an even kind. Yeah, that's why people use dielectric grease, because it's as thick as Colt, but it's easier to move and manoeuvre around, so your mileage may vary. So we are using the 7U uh, stabiliser here, whoops. So it doesn't clip into this PCB directly, it just rests on top of it. Come on, stay in. I was hoping that these would pressure clip in, but that doesn't appear to be the case. It looks like we're going to have to hold it in position and then screw them in. As you can see, they're just kind of flipping up, uh, so they're not quite holding in. Oh, there we go. Maybe that's better. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now they're holding it. I think what was happening is where the flex cuts in the PCB, it was actually pushing it away as I was trying to push it in. So once I supported that area, it was fine. I'm not going to use the washers unless I have to. I'm not really a big fan of putting washers on these and looking at where most of the uh, the screw parts are for this, I shouldn't have to. And again, when you're screwing these in, you're not trying to over tighten these. You don't want to squish the uh, the PCB. The idea is to just just have them fitting nicely. So just finger tighten them basically. Just enough to hold them in place. You don't want to over tighten them, crush the PCB, damage something. Uh, just going to a nice pace inside. Okay, there's a little bit more on that one. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna pop the second one in there. It is really nice that these come with a tool to do this with. 
although I'm not a fan of hex keys because they're so small. I'm going to try to use my own screwdriver, I think. Okay, there we go. Now, as I said before, we are using ISO Enter, so we will need one for the ISO Enter key. If I can work out where that one needs to go. Okay, let's put the one in for the backspace for now. Uh, Potoko did uh, did get it nice, thank you. Uh, glad you received your uh, your carbon fibre plate. So Potoko was kind enough to send me the uh, the board. I, I decided to send him a, a carbon fibre plate. Uh, clearly nowhere near the same value, but uh, you know uh, it was a nice uh, gesture, something I could offer him at the time. No washer. There's no need for a washer. So I only put the washers in place when the screws are going to touch any of the contacts. This screw doesn't touch any of the contacts here, so there's no need for a washer. This one only touches one, so it shouldn't short out anything at all. So if it went over two, like if it was between these two, then I would definitely use a washer. But unless I have to, I'm not going to use one. If you pay attention to the matrix of the PCN, PCB, then you can get away from it. I was skipping the washer okay and will not short second. Yeah, it's not fine, yeah. Uh, Nostalgic34 asking what I use. I've got service oil silicone grease that I'm using at the moment. Uh, it's really good. It's quite thick. I used to use a lot thinner um, dielectric grease, but it doesn't last as long as the thick stuff. So I've moved back to using the thick stuff. So this is what I use, service oil. There you go. Service oil silicone grease. That will, that will do me maybe 500 boards. Something like that. <clears throat> I feel that backspace is usually when I have to use one on. Yeah, on this particular board it doesn't need one at all. Um, it, if it's going to need it anywhere, it's going to be around the ISO enter, I suspect. Let's have a look. Nope, uh, again, two screw points, not touching anything. So we're all good on that perspective as well. Again, I only use stuff if I have to. I'd rather not use washers unless I need to. Yeah, so Jensen, yeah, most PCBs are designed with that. It's only ones that have got tons of compatibility on that are, um, that are over compatible, I would say, uh, where you tend to see the issues. Um, sometimes it, it's just one of those things and you can't because of how you have to root stuff. So if you've got things like. Uh, um, rotary encoders and stuff like that you tend up to end up with more wires and uh, traces and things so it just all depends on, on what you're doing but yeah most most PCBs these days don't don't have any points where the washers touch more than one pin and the easiest thing is when you're testing it after uh, after you've built it if you're getting any shorts you're gonna notice before you actually put it in the case anyway so yeah uh, lols Woods says please update weekly news um, uh, yes, I, uh, I I did update weekly news. If you mean on my prototypist site, that is updated. That's that was updated on Friday. Chat. Yeah, I think it's the coffee that you can see behind me. It's not burning. It's just a cup of coffee on the TV. Hold on. Just a cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is. <coughs> not something burning. Kobe Bryant's dead. That can't be true. Oh, on the Top Pack website. Yeah, Brian does that. Um, if he hasn't been doing it, I'll reach out to him and let him know. Uh, my apologies if uh, if, that, if that's the case. Helicopter crash. Wow. I mean, I don't really know about um, Kobe Bryant. He's a basketball player, I think. Um, but wow. Crazy. Is it basketball player? Is that what he does? Is Or am I misunderstanding? One of the greatest basketball players. Yeah, I don't really follow the sport, and we don't really have it over here, so um, my knowledge of him is is really limited. But yeah, sad. Okay, the LA Lakers. I know those. Who those are? Yeah. <clears throat> wow. That is sad news. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry if you guys uh, follow the sport. 
Okay, so now we've got all of the stabilizers in place. I'm just going to check that everything fits. So there you go, you can see that the plate now slots into place nicely. So the next job is to pop the switches in. Now we are going to be building today with Nolibs. Now the plan is to use these as uh, stock switches for three weeks whilst it's at work, break these in, uh, and then once they're broken in, I've forgotten how palm switches smell. Um, <laughs> then once they're broken in, I'll desolder the board and uh, lube them up and put them back in. So first thing I'm going to do is just see how tight these hold into the PCB. Um, okay, they're going all right. So they're not, they're not stiff in the PCB or anything like that. So let's just get a few switches in. Hold everything into place and then we'll go from there. Now I do need to check that this plate fits with the HHKB top. Now it should do. It should completely fit but I don't want to put any switches in without it fitting so once we've got the switches in the PCB and the plate will test that out. So I'm not going to solder anything until that point. Uh, the ISO I'm going to do after Tom, uh, so that's going to be right at the end of the stream, uh, as that's a one new macro pad that's dead easy to solder, so I'm going to do that last. I don't know what to, what to put my knowledge in, I want to colour coordinate, but there's not a lot of nice green cases. No, that's true. Uh, match uh, SA Skywriter are really nicer though, with these switches. When that comes. There we go. Okay, so once we've got a few more of these switches in, I'll start to fill in the gaps. I'm just trying to uh, make sure it's all supporting itself. Making sure that everything is holding up just fine. Okay, looking good there. Okay, let's start filling in the gaps now, guys, and getting this put together. Honey and olive and chocolate build board. I'm gonna go step caps because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you go step caps? Uh, did I miss the? Oh yeah, we talked about that. Uh, thank you, DJ. You read my mind. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's not wrong, dude. Right? It, it will look great with SA Skywriter with these switches. Um, I'm dead excited for that set. It's going to be the first SA set I've bought in a long while, I think. Honey, olives, and chocolate. Yeah, I'm not sure if that combination is going to be a good food combination, but I'm pretty hopeful it's going to be a great keyboard combination. Uh, sorry, Kid Kidiog, uh, we only have the build command here. Don't use keyboard or switches because my keyboard changes every day. Yeah, that's just them clipping in. Uh, at the minute, my keyboard is uh, the Satisfaction 75. That's the prototype white one. Uh, it's not the Group Buy one. It's slightly different in a couple of areas. Uh, it's got a carbon fiber plate and Holy Pandas. So there we go. And this that we're building today, you can check with build, and this is going to be the Honeyboard 60 with stock Nolive switches, carbon fiber plate, and the golden Honeyboard case. We're going to put some GMK keycaps on there at the end. And then we're also going to build the ISO macro pad, which is in this box here. And that's going to be built right at the very end of the stream. Uh, Zwi, thank you very much for the subscription. Seven months uh, streak, eight months in total. Thank you very much, dude. Is that a T1? Is what a T1? This? No, this is a Hirose switch. Uh, so this is uh, an, an old uh, Japanese cherry switch. It was used in Yamaha sound synthesizers. So, yeah. Almost there now guys, just going to put the last few switches in this, and then before we solder, I'm just going to check, well, 
first thing I'm going to make sure I've got my soldering iron because it's just up there behind the monitor. But I'm just going to check that the uh, the case does fit correctly around these switches. Okay, so that's that all put together. case over. I think there's only two bolts holding it together at the moment. I'm just going to see if we can get lucky on the size of the hex key. I know there was a hex key provided but I much prefer using my own screwdriver set. There we go. That should do the job. Long screws. Gosh, this one's tight. Holy crap. I might need to use the Allen key here just to get the leverage to break the friction. That's really tight. Um, I'm unscrewing these uh, talisman, I'm not screwing them. There we go. So I've got the board apart, we can uh, take a look at its construction as well. Okay. So we're not going to use that plate that was in here. So a few things I want to call out guys. So this has got a brushed finish on the inside, but there's a couple of things that I want to point out. First part is, if my camera focuses, go on camera. is that these little nubbins here are used to align the case. Now these are on the front edge, the back edge, and also on the sides as well, which is really good. Uh, brushed on the inside, but not too worried about any marks there. Again, looks really solid. Okay, you can see that's how it's all fit together there. Looks pretty damn good, even if I do say so myself. And then here's the interesting part on the internals. You can see it's got this lovely honey pattern to it. Now these do vary in depth, so they're quite shallow here and quite deep here. There's probably, I don't know if I can show you that. But they're quite shallow at one side and quite deep at the other. There you go. I do love all this machine patterning as well. I think that looks really, really cool, really great. And you can see the machine patterning around these as well. I really, really like that look. You can also see that these are being milled out ready for the O-rings to go in that I showed earlier on. So the O-rings are just going to sit in there. And then when the case is put on top, the case will compress down on top of the O-rings. Um, there we go. You can see that the case is actually holding on to the, uh, the plate already. So when I put the, uh, the plate and align it correctly, you can see that those little tabs are already jumping up through the plate and holding it in place. So that's not going anywhere. There we go. Nice. So there we go guys, that's the, the case and plate, that's how it's all going to sit together, that's how it's going to look when it's built, really excited to, to get to that point. I'm just going to pop the case to one side for a moment. Next job now is to solder the board and put everything together from that perspective. <coughs> that looks so nice, thanks man, thanks. A little nubbins, yeah, love me some nubbins. Very interesting the sound of the board, I'm really interested to see how it sounds as well. I wonder how much that machining cost. Um, the quality of it, the quality of it would tend to suggest a lot. However, the price of these boards is incredibly cheap. So, Pitoko, if you're watching, um, that's great. Um, so I'll be honest. Where the way the way I drilled this um, uh, Pitoko is, I overlaid the actual. So you sent me two plates. You sent me the brass plate that was in this one. I took it apart. You also sent me a black aluminium one as well. I overlaid the black aluminium one, taped them both together, held them in place with clamps, and then just drilled through the holes that were in the aluminium uh, plate onto a block of wood uh, through the carbon fibre. Then I just widened the holes with a larger drill bit. Now, they're not perfect because I didn't have time to do it. I, I literally did it in about seven minutes. Um, so I went to the garage, taped everything up, uh, used some um, uh, clamps, everything else, put it all down, uh, screw, dr drilled them all through. and it, it, So they should line up. Now, I don't think they do perfect perfectly but what will happen is when, when I put the bolts in and I get a bit of force on it it'll go together I'm pretty confident they're broadly in the right place uh, I just don't think they're quite wide enough necessarily for the bolts so um, oh actually they, they look alright 
they look all right. Mm, well, that one's a little bit tight, but uh, yeah, they, they will go through. It'll be it'll be perfectly fine. <clears throat> okay, so now, guys, we just need to solder this together. I'm just going to grab my soldering iron. <clears throat> Trusty soldering at my end. And I'm going to grab some solder. And then, just while the soldering iron's heating up, I'm just going to double check and make sure we've not got any bent pins. So, what I'm doing is I'm just going switch to switch, just making sure that I can see two pins poking through for every switch. As long as I can, we're good to go. I can start soldering, and then we can move on to the next phase of the build. Okay. All looking good so far. Okay, all looking good. Everything's pressed together. The PCB is aligned with the plate really nicely. So everything's looking nice and snug. So we're going to go and crack on with the soldering. Okay. Just going to do a couple of switches around the outside and a couple of switches in the centre first of all. Make sure the rest of the soldering looks nice and neat and tidy. Then we'll just double check the PCB. I did test it before the stream, it was working. So we'll double check at that point and then put all together. Then we'll switch over the keycaps and then we'll do a little bit of a sound test and see what you guys think. Once I've done that, we'll jump over to quickly building the macro pad, uh, which shouldn't take long because it's one single switch. Just different weighted springs, which are a bit pingy anyway. Um, yeah, so I think the wings are slightly different. The, the, the springs are slightly different weighted in the uh, the olives. When I've worn these switches in, I probably will change the springs. I want to try some thick thock springs in these. Uh, I'm going to use the magically progressive ones. Um, but as I say, that's going to be a couple of weeks away. The idea is to just build this board now, get a feel for it, test it out, and then from there we'll. Uh, From there, we'll uh, rebuild it in a couple of weeks' time once the switch is bro uh, broken in and see how the board goes. Um, but it's going to be my work board for the next couple of weeks. The aim is to build it around the, the last week in February. Almost there now, guys. That's uh, first row done. Not too many more to go. I'm gonna work my way back along this area here. Let's see if I can turn mine into a three-hour build. Nice. <laughs> Is that your ISO macro pad quirk? I didn't even get tracking for it, it just turned up randomly one day. I, w I wasn't even expecting it yet, so I don't know who else has got theirs yet, but um, it, it just randomly turned up, so I'm really excited to build it. Okay. I'm really, really tempted to reach out to Patoko as well and see if he's interested in making uh, my J04 um, 40% because the quality on this machining of the honeyboard is just super good really really impressive I 
Uh, is it going to be extras of the isomacropad? I believe so, yeah. I'm also tempted to pick up one of those bini pads as well, or bind pads, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Reason being, because for a three key macro pad, it's $50. Now, even if that doesn't happen and anything goes wrong with the group buy, it's only $50, so I'm not too worried about it. But for $50, it's a pretty good deal. So I'm tempted to get one of those as well. Uh, and also the Lockheed, uh, because that's just cute as hell. It's quite possibly the cutest macro pad on the market right now uh, and that's only an IC I guess but uh, not on the market. But uh, yeah, gotta love Max's designs as well. Uh, anything Max touches is probably going to be good so it's well worth picking those up if you can. Okay, and we're less than a week away from the JO2 as well guys so Really excited about that. The uh, the limited edition form goes up uh, on Saturday coming. That's going to be at 10 EST. So really excited for that. Uh, get the JO2 out there in the hands of a few people. And the group buy starts a week exactly a week later. So 10 a.m. Uh, EST on the 8th of February. That's when uh, the actual group buy starts. So really excited to get that out as well. Good progress now. Uh, will there be a JOX in 65% with a public group buy? Um, no plans for one as yet. So the the closest we had to that was the uh, the JO1, which was 65% with macro cluster. Um, but that being said, I, I am looking at things different to the J series now. The, the, there's two more J series boards that maybe get made. The 40% definitely will. Uh, and maybe the Mini 1800. After that, I'm looking at kind of a new design language. So uh, James AKB, who's in chat, who does all my CAD work for me, um, we're actually working on a design at the moment that I've got, which is completely screwless. No glue, no magnets, nothing. Just uh, good old design. Uh, taking some elements of woodworking into it to uh, to produce a design that doesn't need any screws or anything else to, to put it together. So, as much as I love the J series design, I don't want to stick with it forever. I want to kind of do new things as well. And of course, it all depends on how that JO2 group buy goes as well. Because if that doesn't go very well, uh, then uh, then there won't be any more new boards from me for a long time. So uh, hopefully that won't be the case, but we'll see. Hopefully uh, the general public's going to like it. Warren's here as well. Good afternoon, good evening. Dovetail connection. I'm not going to share any more details, but dovetail is not correct. Um, it's not going to use dovetail joints, um, but it is going to be a completely screwless design. No magnets required, nothing else required, no glue, you don't have to glue it together or anything like that. GR2 is going to sell out, hopefully, hopefully, um, if not I'll have to buy it out, <laughs> no I'm sure it'll do well, um, I'm, ex I'm really excited about it actually because it, everyone who's tried the GR1 has really liked it um, and loves the sound of it and the GR2 sounds just as good if not better and the whole board is designed around sounding good so you know I'm really excited to share that with everyone and for people to see it. Uh, got some good reviews at the latest UK meetup, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, almost there now. Just a few more switches to do on the bottom row, and then we are done. My wife's racking up, so I'm sorry if you guys can hear that, but I can hear it. Okay, I think that's it. I think we are done. Excellent. 
Uh, did I end up getting a goose kit? Yes, I did. Um, I'm really excited to try that board out. I mean, I've tried Chris Swire's board out and I really liked it. Um, I think the thing is, it, for me, I like to have boards that have got historical significance. So I really want a uh, number one uh, TKL, the original one with the gaskets on just one side and that supports ISO because of the impact that had. Um, uh, I really, really want. Uh, you know the, the, the GSKT because of things it did for the community uh, as well very similar to the, the number one um, I also really wanted to have an IDB and I did get I did buy one in the group buy but uh, sadly one of the boards got delivered damaged uh, in transit so I've had to give up my board so uh, that someone else gets the IDB but I still do have a steel one that Pingu was kind enough to let me have uh, for, for my efforts on the group buy so I still do have a steel one I just don't have one of the standard ones anymore I just want to buy your OG Jane V2. I haven't even built that. It's just sat in a box. Um, I'm probably going to build it with the CE when that comes in and build them together. Um, so yeah. Jay has acquired specialised technology from visiting aliens. No, just a clever design. That's all it is. <laughs> I know, sell it to me. No, someone's got dibs on it if I do sell it. Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, is just check that this PCB is all working. So I'm just going to steal the USB cable from... There we go. So you can hear that clicking in the background, guys. I'm just going to bring up uh, switches so you guys can see what I see. So let's, uh, let's go through. Okay, looking good on the top row. Looking good on there. Looking good there as well. Turn caps lock off. Okay, that should be FN. Yeah, there we go. That's getting the F keys. Uh, and then win control. There we go. Okay. Oh, that key's not working. Is that an FN key as well? Yeah, so that's FN. So two keys are focused as FN. Dead easy to reprogram, so we're all good on that front. Everything is working as it should be. Plug my macro pad back in. There we go. Gouty here as well. Uh, I'm not talking to Gouty. Uh, if any of you want to know why, ask him. But he's, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not talking to him. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking, I am. Uh, he, he, I was the butt of one of his jokes at the uh, at the UK meetup, so um, <laughs> I'm just winding him up. Okay, so next job now, guys, is to pop the rubber bump ons in place. These go just in each of these, just to soften out the downstroke of the uh, the plate. So these do sit slightly proud and uh, compressed, just to just to soften the plate sound out a little bit. Spare. There we go. Put that away. Yeah. So Gouty at the uh, at the UK meetup, he did give a, a bit of a talk, and as I say, he used me as the butt of one of his jokes. Okay, just going to try and get this to fit. Slightly okay. So the issue we've got here, guys, is there's a slight issue with the case. Can you see there where the USB doesn't quite come through, but the plate's still hanging over the edge? The USB actually needs to go that way. So I may not be able to build this because the hole's just not in the right position. Either that or the plate's out. So I'm not sure which it is. Hmm. So that may stop us in our tracks for this particular build. It's uh, just to show you guys how much it's out. It's like a millimeter out. You can see there, it's, it's like a millimeter out. Do I have a file? A file off easy? Uh, I do, but not to hand. Let me, let me see. Oh, okay. So I can see. Oops, I forgot the rubbers were in there. Let me just, let me just take these out. One, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 1, 12, there we go. Okay, so, just to show you guys what's, what's here. So, there's a thin piece of metal just there that just be filed away. Um, now, I don't have any files to hand. I'm going to try and... Yeah, okay, so, it's not going to take much. But it's not going to be something I can finish on stream today, sadly. Hmm. Okay, so I can fix it really easily with the Dremel. I just need to get the Dremel in uh, and then just go through and down. Just widen that hole out a little bit. That's really, really sad. I was looking forward to building this today. Um, but I literally don't have a, a hand file that I can do it with. You can always just move the port. Um, yeah. Sure. Sure. I'm not going to be able to move the port on the PCB, sadly. It's uh, it's kind of fixed in place where it is. It's not going anywhere. Um, that's a real shame. It's just slightly off. Mm. Mm. Okay, so that's going to have to happen off stream. It's going to have to happen off stream. Desolder and run wire. Oh, I could. Mm. Yeah. Again. It's a lot of work to do when I can just file it, and the file filing will only take me like five minutes. But it means going out to the garage, getting the Dremel, putting the right bit in, plugging it in, Dremeling it. <sighs> right, okay. So I'm not going to be able to finish this off today, guys. I'm really sorry, but I will finish it off during the week, and then we'll do a J score on it next week. Uh, I'm really sorry about that. Um, it was a prototype board. Uh, I know that Patoko sent this across. You know quite a few months ago now uh, so it was one of the prototype ones so I know they fixed it for the actual round but uh, just one of those things just one of those things sorry guys I do apologize but it does mean you don't have to see Handabyte today so there are there are some there are some small wins uh, Dodge board <laughs> J score the macro pad yeah we'll, we'll do the macro pad now let's uh, let's move on to the macro pad I'm really really sorry about that guys I was really really looking forward to trying this board out uh, and having it as my work board for a little while it's just slightly off yeah I can just it's just slightly off I hope if I had the right way around anyway one of those things you can see how it's going to look. That's how it's going to look. It's going to look pretty nice, though. Um, there you go. You can see kind of how it's going to look. It's a nice, thick black line around the edges, which is where the where the carbon fibre shows through. Oh well, I do apologise about that, guys. Let me uh, just put these grommets back away. Just an excuse not to use hand bite on the Satisfaction 25. Exposed. Yes. If I knew I was going to need to file the case down, guys, I would have done it before the stream. So I'm really sorry. I am really sorry. Okay, not to worry. We can do that later on. Go ahead, Enko actually sabotaged this by going into the past and didn't have to see Handabite. Yeah, quite possibly. So what I'll do, guys, I'll tell you what. I'll fix the case for next week. And I'll screw it together. And then when we start the stream next week, I'll remove those keycaps, I'll put those on the board, and then we'll put Handabite on there right at the beginning of next week's stream. We'll start with a J score for that. In the meantime, let's get rid of Switch here, because you guys don't want to see that. What you do want to see is the ISO macro pad. <clears throat> so as I said before, we are going to be building this as ISO layout, because that's what it supports. So it's only going to be a one key macro pad using the best ISO enter we have to date. Which is this lovely work of art, which will be forming part of it. Come on, focus camera. Come on, please. There you go. This lovely work of art. Cool. Okay, so without much further ado, let me show you the ISO macro pad. So I did show this on stream the other day uh, on Top Pack. Uh, it's a 1U macro pad which comes in this great little pouch. This actually remain, really reminds me of these pouches, the Tien New Labs ones. It's almost the same. Very similar. Wouldn't surprise me if they were made by the same company or something like that. Um, but either way, yeah, really exciting. Not using the ISO desk mat. It's in the wash, actually. I, wash, I was going to wash it specifically for this stream, but uh, it didn't dry out in time. It's still damp, so that's why it's not on camera at the minute. MK Ultra logo? No, it's the uh, 
Uh, that that logo is not from MK Ultra. It's actually from Illuminati Keyboards, which is the guys behind the ISO macro pad. Now, in terms of the macro pad, it is ISO shaped. It is one U. It does have a stabilizer. It is in this lovely red color, which actually matches my ocelot really well. Um, it does have a polycarbonate plate. It's got the Illuminati Keyboards logo on the base. Four bump on spots. I assume there's bump ons in here. Nope, oh, no bump ons in there. Okay, so provide your own bump ons. I'll probably have some spare somewhere. And we are going to build it in ISO layout with a Hirose uh, switch. So there you go. There is the PCB. Ion keyboards, Illuminati keyboards, and AIO3 as well included. There we go. Logos on the other side. Awesome source. So first things first, let's take this apart. Let's just use hex keys as well, but really rather small ones. So let's see if we can find the right size bit for these. Larger than that. There we go. Okay, half done. Will it run Crisis? It absolutely should run Crisis, yes, it's powerful enough to. Ergonomics to the max, moving your arm to press enter. So I'm not going to be using this as an enter key, uh, I will be using this as a macro pad. This is going to be what turns my PC on and off. Okay, so just looking at the internals here guys, you can see pretty intricate to be honest with you. You can see where the PCB rests on these four kind of corner mounts. This is where there's a, a tab on the PCB as well, so it slots in just like so. Plenty of room in there for it. Okay, perfect. And then in terms of the, uh, the plate, it is top mount, and it's top mounted with four screws. Overkill. It's not gasket mounted, no. It wouldn't need to be gasket mounted either. The fact that it's got a polycarbonate plate in it is obscene. It's super cool. And I'm a huge fan. I apologise if you guys can hear my wife backing up as well. She's pretty much outside the room now. She'll probably complain that I haven't done it. Sleep and wake, yes. <clears throat> Didn't you? Yeah, sleep and wake, or not, not on and off. Yeah, no, sorry, I should have been more clear on that. Oops. Must be a very quiet vacuum. No, it's really loud. I'm, I'm, I really don't know how you guys can't hear that. Okay, there you go. You can see where the, the hook marks are on the inside of the case when it focuses, uh, which is where there's got some slight different color changes, but that's just where it's been hooked. But you can't see any of that from the outside, so it's all good. That's just fluff or lint. It's all looking really rather tasty from there. First things first, let's pop the, uh, the switch into the plate. Oof. Done. That's uh, almost there. Next thing we're going to do is put a stabilizer in here. Uh, I'm going to grab a stabilizer from one of my trusty packets of stabilizers. I've got some in the bottom of here. There we go. Is this lubed or not? This is already pre-lubed, so I'm not going to overly lube this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch this up with a little bit. So where I'm worried about is, oops, I put the cover on that. Where I'm worried about is just where the wire is. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just put some lube on the wire from underneath the switch. going to do that on both sides and then we're just going to put a tiny bit of lube just on the slider sides as well just to make sure that this is all good there we go job done okay I'm just going to quickly unscrew these 
Pizarco, apologies to everyone about the port being off. It must not have been pushed against the stop correctly when machining a few of them. It's not a problem, man. It was an early prototype that you sent me. These things happen. I should have checked it before the stream. Oh, whoops. Um, now, I did think I had checked it, but clearly I hadn't. I'd not put it together properly. I think I just pushed the PCB in there and it must have been slightly to the right. It's a dead easy fix and it will take me 10 minutes and I'll probably do it tomorrow night after work. Just going to pop the stabilizer in here now, guys. And then again, just going to screw this down. Again, not going to over tighten this. Just going to make sure we're not squishing the PCB, but just do it finger tight. Wife cancelling microphone. Yeah, I'm sure you guys could hear it. Yeah, you must have been able to hear it. Will the ISO be getting a J score? Do you want a J score of the ISO? Do you want to do a J score of the ISO? Because if you do, we can do that. We can arrange that. Oof, there we go. All pushed together. So now we're going to solder this. This is going to be quite difficult because the uh, the switch is a bit of a pain. It's uh, something that doesn't clip into a PCB, sadly. So. <clears throat> We are going to have to pin it down. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to I'm just going to solder one leg to begin with. The reason why I'm only going to solder one leg just to begin with is just to make sure that everything is level. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on one second. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is a Zeal stabilizer and there is some cracking on the stem. Now, it's not been used before, it should have been put together. But that is slightly worrying. Let me just. It's not going to stop the keycap adhering to it. But it is going to stop the keycap going on. So I'm just going to trim that broken piece off. Very interesting. Okay. So then what we're going to do is just pop. A keycap on, make sure everything's nice and straight. There we go. Okay, all looks straight from there. Solder the second leg. Sorry, this uh, particular build is taking so long, guys. This is a huge, huge board, and uh, yeah, it's just taking a little while to get through all the soldering. But we will persevere, don't worry. <clears throat> this is keyboard of the year without that. <laughs> I heard Jay will raffle an OTD. What? No, that's not happening. Who told you that? <clears throat> As I see you beat 765 being and gone yet. Yes, CU65 has been and gone. If you want to see it again, we can show it off at the end of the stream. Okay, so that's now all in place. I'm just gonna screw this in. This build would be better if it wasn't ISO. Sure. Uh, I'm surprised no one's done uh, an ANSI version, to be honest. I've, I've been, I'm sure someone did an interest check for one. Okay, that's that in place. Yep. I'm just gonna come counter opposed. Uh, Zui says, are you doing a typing test? We need to know your word per minute. Yeah, uh, we can do my... Well, my word per minute is like 65. Um, I don't, I'm not particularly quick. Talisman says, prefer tightening order, diametrically opposed, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, thank you, Talisman. Oops, lost the screw there. Okay. That's 
that put together. Next we're going to pop on the base. We're going to screw that together. And then screw this one together as well. Okay, almost there now. I'm slightly disappointed it didn't come with uh, with bump ons in the packet. I thought it would have done. I probably do have some lying around. Let me see if I've got any of the right sized. Little box of goodies. Let's see if these are the right size. Just not your desk mat that they already ship. Uh, I got this sent from mykeyboard.eu. Uh, check them out, they're up here, guys. Uh, I got sent just the other day, so I'm not sure if they've actually shipped the by ones yet or not. Um, I got it shipped with my Handabyte set. These look like they're going to fit. Awesome source. Perfect. There we go. That's one. Okay. Yeah, it's like this point they didn't come, but hey, well, these things happen. go. So that's the build complete guys. This is the ISO macro pad with ISO key. How cool is that? I'm going to definitely do some infill on that at some point. Not today. Let's steal the cable again and let's see if this works. Setting up ISO. It's working. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I didn't get any Pona, but thank you. I mean, I love the thing, but yeah, there wasn't any in it. I mean, I literally got, um, yeah, there's none, none in here. It came in this, this case is awesome, by the way. I didn't know it was going to come with this, but this case is awesome. Um, and there was just the PCB in there. Um, it's one of those things, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, you know, the, the bump ones I had will do the job for now. Um, don't worry about it, Pona. It is completely fine. The ones I have are slightly semi -sucky. You can probably see they're slightly raised off of here. Can't lift it too far because of the cable. Let's see if I can show you. Um, yeah, so some flat ones would have been nicer, but uh, it's fine. It actually, absolutely works. Let's get up, switch here, and let's see what this is actually programmed as. Let's see what it's programmed as, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that supposed to happen? Is that what it's supposed to do? <laughs> press it in chat. Uh, no, not in chat. Let me go somewhere else and press it. Let me see what it types out. Um, okay, now I am going to put it in chat. This is awesome. Okay, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Right, I am going to put this in here. Um, so, there we go. So this is what it does. How cool is that? That's really clever. That's really, 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 really clever. Um, wow. Pona, I don't know who coded that, but whoever did it, great job. That macro is perfect. Um, that is really, really cool. Really, 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 really cool. I'm really, <laughs> I am super impressed with that. That is phenomenal. Um, I am going to go to that link. I think I'm already part of the Discord, so I can't join that. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, okay, so I, I get a page not found on GitHub. Let me uh, let me copy the link and paste it. I'm getting a page not found. It's the pound. Okay, should be a dollar. Oh, okay, yes, of course. Because, uh, yes, because I am in the UK, so it's just defaulted to my language. Yes, a good spot. Uh, no, I'm still getting 
The page not found even when I change it to a dollar. The, the macro, so everything, if you look just above uh, uh, if if Owen Croft, uh, so you can see where I posted three uh, under the top pack name, it said hello I am your ISO, you can flash me with new key maps from here, HTTPS config QMK FM uh, Illuminati ISO layout uh, for any help join the discord here, so that's uh, that's what it did, so Pona, I'm not sure if you're around still, but that link doesn't work, uh, it doesn't take me to anywhere, it puts a pound sign in uh, I wonder if I just take that completely out actually No, still page not found. Um, let me just go to QMK config and do it from there. Let me see if it's on there. Uh, H Illuminati ISO. It is on here. Okay, so it is on there. So I can configure it to do what I want. Awesome source. Okay. Okay, excellent. So everything is on there, so I can definitely do everything I wanted to. Um, I can even do all the stuff that I wanted to as well. So it's on QMK configurator, so that's dead easy to do. Oh, it should have been a hash, right? Okay, I've got you. Yeah, sorry, I thought it was. Do it would have changed it to a dollar, but it should have been the hash. Yes. So we're just on that pony because I have my PC language in. UK, it changes the pound sign to the uh, GBP sound, the, the currency for the UK sign. Um, so yeah, yeah. So just to bear that in mind, I'll program that off stream, guys. But it was just really, really simply, you can use QMK Configurator. It's under Luminati slash ISO. Uh, all of the features are there. Dead, dead easy to do. So yeah. Well, the macro is a great idea, Sir Jensen, but it's just uh, it'll happen for anyone that doesn't use. American English on their PC, it'll translate whatever that key does. So uh, I imagine some other countries will have a similar function there or whatever, but uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so let's get rid of the switch hitter. You don't need to see that anymore. <clears throat> uh, we'll be all after they ship. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but yes, yeah, so just so just so you're aware, Pono, it, it, it does change the link depending on what the system uh, settings are of the key of the PC it's plugged into. So because I'm in the UK, it defaulted the the hash sign to the GBP pound sign. So there we go. Um, but yeah, how cool is that? That's such a great little macro pad. Got a great enter key on it. It looks great. I'm going to infill the logo later on. Oh yeah, sound test. It's just a tiny little case, so it sounds quite echoey, but it's great. I love it. I think this is great. This is one of the best things I've ever bought in the keyboard hobby. Um, I think it's amazing. Christmas cane, how hard would it be to change the colour of these, or is extra quantity really limited? I mean, you could quite... It, it's because the case is so small that it's pingy, Krasios, and it's also using a Hirose switch, which is also really pingy as well. But it... it it's a, it's a one key macro pad. It doesn't have to sound good. Um, how hard would it be to change color? You could quite easily coat this, or you could reanodize it if you wanted to. But this red is lovely. I can't tell you how much I like this red. How much it works with that black enter key. It looks great. It looks great. Definitely one of the best things I've uh, I've got. Is that like the Profit Burgundy? Uh, it's very similar. Yes. Um, so the Profit and the Ocelot are almost the same color. This is slightly slightly darker as you can see it's not quite as light it's slightly darker than the two but yeah really really good <laughs> I think it looks fantastic I think it looks fantastic hi Sendrim glad to see you I'm a huge fan of this huge fan huge fan about that uh, how are you feeling about the Godspeed 75? I think it's a fine board if you like 75% it's good um, it's not one for me I'll be honest but uh, yeah um, if you like it that's good <clears throat> Sweden boys are all in the stream. We want to see Handabite. Okay, you guys want to see Handabite. Here is Handabite. I'm surprised you guys haven't got it yet if you've all bought it. <coughs> Typical GMK tray being difficult. But here is Handabite in all of its glory.
<laughs> uh, of course, the space bars as well if you need those. Now, I was going to put it on the Satisfaction 75 and move the key set over to the honey board. Um, shall we just do that anyway and then and then we can see what we're doing? And we'll have to get the rest of uh, Chocolatier out anyway, so we could just take that off. And we could put Hand a Bite on there. Should we do that? The most under underestimated uh, <laughs> GM cake in history. The just best that I've ever seen. So let put my eyes on. Nice. Let's put it on a board, shall we? Uh, the stream's running quite early because we couldn't finish the other build. So let's let's take Chocolatier off of here. I need to find a, an artisan to go with though. Let's put Hand a Bite off. Unicorn you have a friend that will absolutely love this set. Um, yeah, hand -a -bite. So, so for those you don't know, the reason why we have hand -a -bite in the world is that uh, GMK, or Cherry as they were that back then, they wanted to show off their double shotting capabilities uh, for trade shows and the things like that. So they made a one-off board that had uh, all of the different colours that they produced at the time uh, with different legends and different coloured keycaps and stuff like that. Um, and they produced a one-off keycap set and they put it on a board, they took it to trade shows, um, they did all sorts of things with it. I'm just conscious that I might actually be typing stuff somewhere, so let me just make sure I'm not. Okay, there we go. No, I'm just going to unplug this for now, there we go. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so so they, uh, they took it to trade shows and then companies started to buy stuff from them because they could do all this different double shotting and the keycap set got them a lot of sales and that's the main reason why GMK today can offer all of the colours that it can do because Handabite was there at those trade shows in the early days um, and then we found them and brought them into the community a few years back and it's been uh, growing from there so we have a lot to thank for Handabite if it had never been made in the first place then we might never have seen all of the different colour keycaps we do from GMK today it might have just never happened There we go. That's a little bit of history for you. Yeah, GMK bought the tooling from Cherry. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. They bought the um, the ABS tooling from Cherry. They didn't buy the PBT tooling from Cherry. The PBT tooling uh, went around a bit, and I believe it's with CRP and Hammerworks now. Uh, I believe that's the original Cherry tooling for uh, PBT. You never put it on something you like. I, I'll be honest, I don't like to look at the set, but I like the history behind it. So, because I like the history of it, that makes it all worthwhile to me. And I think that's a perfectly fine way of doing it. So, this gets me the key set ready for the, uh, the honey board anyway. I would need to get the key set dug out anyway, because there's uh, certain keys that aren't on the board that I'd need to put on the the honey board as well, but the keycap set up ready for it as well. It's a great display board if you work at Google, absolutely. Isn't it with BSP? Yeah, BSP and Hammer works, yeah. As far as I'm aware, but I might be wrong on that, Gouty. I don't know. What did I say? Did I not say BSP and Hammer works? I thought that's what I'd said. Almost there now, guys. Uh, no, B BSP and Hammerworks. I think Hammerworks were licensed to use it from BSP. I'm, I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong. <clears throat> Here you can see Handabyte's inspiration, or sort of. Oh, can you see it on there? Can you? Interesting. Let me have a look. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, yeah, I get that. Hammer got caps from BSP, right? Okay, yeah, okay. So BSP produced the caps, and then Hammer, um, Hammer did the dice. I mean, gotcha. 
I knew it was something like that. Thank you, Pona, for uh, for correcting me there. Here is a good Flicker album. What's the Flicker album of? That was Sangan Sets. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's a Handabai album. Yes, yes, that is a good set. Yeah, that is a good sorry uh, album. I have seen that before. I do want to know who has the original Handabai board now. As far as I know, it's someone in Korea, but I I don't know who. Um, but I'd be really interested to to get both the old and the new set together with them, and see if we could make something happen from that. Sangan was the uh, the guy who invented the Sangan layout, and I think it's the same guy that has the uh, the kit. I'm going to have to use a slightly different tool now. I hate using the plastic ones, but I'm going to have to use it for these. Yeah, is is it Sangan that's got the actual uh, the original hand bite board though? Is it him that owns it? That's the interesting thing to hear. Uh, I don't know what Sangan's true name is, sorry. There we go. Okay, so that's all removed from there. Let's uh, let's pop this keycap set on in all of its wonderful, colourful glory. Unironically using this set. I think there's a Tesco CD in the picture, so it's, is it in the UK? Um, I don't think it was in the UK. If it is... Then I want it. And I'm going to hunt it down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it ended up with a user in Korea, but I, I couldn't be certain on that. I did delve into the history of it a couple of years back, but and I did learn about it. I did learn about it originally from um, Zonda. Zonda was the guy who told me about it originally. Yeah, these trays are not the best. Um, I do like the banda rolls though, which is why I keep them all stored in the banda rolls, because I think the banda rolls look great. Okay. Do you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of um, sweets that we used to get in the UK called Starburst or something like that. Opal fruits, that's what they're called, opal fruits. When I was a kid, there used to be these sweets called opal fruits. And these just remind me of those sweets. I don't know why. Probably the colours. Oh, a Starburst, Star, okay, so that's why I thought of, of Starburst. Okay, because Starburst and opal fruits, you, yeah, okay, yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah, okay. So they used to be called opal fruits, they became Starburst in the UK, yes. Uh, need the ISO enter. Uh, I just joined and my eyes already hurt. Um, hey man, good to see you. Good to see you last week as well uh, at the UK meetup. Plume keyboards, they definitely remind me uh, of little Starbursts. Yeah, just the green ones especially, I think. I think it's just the same colour or a very similar shade. In before someone tells you pass that I'm putting this on the Satisfaction 75 and he jumps into chat and complains at me. That's bound to happen at some point. Okay, Satisfaction 75 extra sold out in five seconds this morning. Nice. It's pretty good going. The uh, the IDB sixty extra sold out in thirteen seconds, and I only announced it on one Discord, or well, two Discords, but yeah, there wasn't any official announcement. I just went. Almost there now, folks. I can't even check out in five seconds. Yeah, I mean, it happens. Um, 
it's just crazy how things sell sometimes in this community. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's not necessarily a good thing, it's just the, the way that these things go. <clears throat> Trust me, the word got around, Jay. I, I don't think it really did. The, I mean, so so we had... Okay, so here's, here's some numbers for you. I couldn't get into Shopify for a little while to check. Um, but from the, the second that I put up the extras to them selling out was 13 seconds. And there's only... I think there was at less, less than 15 boards. Went up. I can't remember the exact number. Less than 15 boards went up. And that was checkout time. So it was, uh, it was 13 seconds when the final person checked out. Because, of course, once you've got it in your basket, it's locked. You can't then... No one else can add it. So, realistically, it's up to the people getting them in their basket times. Which is a lot shorter, but I don't know what that number is. And in terms of the actual... Uh, traffic to the site there was 764 people uh, who joined the site now not all of those are necessarily going to try and buy but maybe we're just having a look uh, or might have been looking at other things but yeah that's the number that were there uh, the IDB extras will be shipping this week uh, so they'll be shipped so I'm actually a <laughs> So the, 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 the challenge I've got this week is there was a couple of deaths just outside of the family and there's a couple of funerals that I've got coming up. So they may or may not impact shipping dates, but it will be within the next seven days. So by this time next weekend, they'll be shipped. They'll be on the way. Um, that's the best I can say right now because I just don't know when... Um, I'm just not sure when I'm going to have to run to the funeral, so it's one of those things. Um, a couple of old family friends, both of them were in the 80s and 90s, and they'd had great innings, um, they were both lovely people, and it wasn't totally unexpected for either of them, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's all good from that perspective. Okay, so then we just need to go page up, page down, and FN. Okay. Look at that hair. There we go. Okay, there we go, guys. That's Handabyte now on a board. Just look at that glorious set. Just look at the memes. The things we do for memes in this community. There we go. <laughs> so although I didn't build this board today, there is hand a bite on the satisfaction seventy five. Please no one tell Lupas because he'll probably come and tell me off. I forgot the enter key on properly. There we go. <laughs> the stream doesn't do these amazing colours justice. I mean, it's pretty close on the stream to how they are in real life. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the board rebuilt. And what we could do is we could just get a quick view. Uh, I know I know I can't build this board up just yet, and it's it's not going to be put together. But you can kind of uh, get a feel for how these keycaps are going to look on here. Um, I think I can do almost everything apart from the bottom row. I'll have to get the keycap set out for that. But we may as well uh, pop these on. In fact, I don't think I can do much of it actually. Can't do the bottom row at all, but you can start to see how it's going to look. It's going to look pretty good. The keycaps are going to work really well on this one. So I'll probably put arrows on here anyway, just because I like the way that they look. Whoops. Don't 
<clears throat> will continue to watch in full screen. Nice. Uh, why are so many people hating on it? Looks clean. It's fine. It's not a set that you need to particularly use to to enjoy. That's the thing. It's more about its history, what it brought to the community, what it's done for the community, why we have what we have in the community today. And you can agree or disagree with that, but you know, it's nice to support the memes sometimes. That's how I'd like to think about it. Sometimes all you can do is support the memes because if you didn't, well. What else is it to support, I guess? <laughs> I am really surprised that it made it to MOQ, though. Um, so, yeah. I think it's quite nice. It's quite nice that we can, as a community, do something like this. <clears throat> Almost there now, guys. Um, there we go. As I say, I won't be able to do the bottom row because I will need to dip into the actual main box for that, but you'll be able to see the rest of the board and how it looks. And as I say, we'll be able to screw it together next week, but not today. Uh, there we go. So I just need the seven new space bar. But other than that, you guys can see how that's going to look when it's all put together. It's going to look pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. You guys were right. The chocolate here does really suit the golden. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy you guys told me to do it that way. Yeah, definitely happy. I think that looks really good. Thank you guys for the advice there. And I'll just dig out the 7 new space bar for it at some point soon. But uh, yeah, we'll finish the build off next week and then we'll do the J score right at the beginning of next week's stream. Now, the real question, guys, and you're going to have to tell me in chat tell me, do you want me to do a J score of the ISO macro pad? Focus, damn you. Focus, camera. Do you want to see the J score of the ISO macro pad? No one said no, so I'm going to assume that everyone wants to. Let me uh, just create a little bit of space here, guys. So I'll fix that case up for next week. Um, it should take me a penalty. The, the worst thing is, it's going to literally take me two minutes with the. Uh, it's going to take me two minutes with the Dremel to fix it. That's the really, really frustrating thing. Vogon, you're not wrong, SA Chocolatier might look even better, but the real answer is let's just shine that GM case up, right? Let's use it and shine it up. Uh, Duckcom, did you miss the CU65? Yes, you did. <clears throat> uh, before moving on, what lube on the Nolives? None at the moment. They are completely stock, but I can't really do a sound test because the board doesn't fit together just yet. There's a slight issue with the USB port on the actual case that just needs milling out a little bit. Um, so they're completely stock uh, olives, don't, they don't have any lube in them at the minute. The plan is to use this board once it's built for three weeks, break it in, desolder it, lube it, rebuild it. That's the current plan, so that's how it's going to work. So I've got uh, chocolate on olive on honey, so there we go. Okay, <clears throat> right then guys, uh, let's do the J-score for the ISO macro pad. Let me get everything ready. Boom, there we go. So, I just need to merge those. Where's the merge tool on here? I need to merge them. I need to merge them. Okay. 
Oops. Okay, and then we've got the minus O. And it's got, uh, what did we put in that? We put uh, Hirose. Switching it. Uh, PC plate, technically. Can anyone remember how much, how much these were? I can't recall. Let me have a look in my email. Let me see if I can find in my email how much I spent on this. Uh, receipt for my $69.99 there we go $70 $70 I'm gonna put the $69.99 in there because 69 is a funny number there we go excellent okay so so guys we <laughs> we were gonna let's weigh this as well actually let's uh, let's give this away so you guys can see how much it weighs it weighs 2.5 ounces or in grams 72 grams so it's pretty light it's pretty light but yeah 72 grams 71 grams 70 ish grams <laughs> Oops. there we go no brush weight Sadly, no. Uh, I will infill the logo. That might add a gram of paint to it, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, guys. So, the first thing we're going to do then on the J-score is uh, work out how easy it was to build. How easy did it look for me to build this? Taking it apart, putting it back together. How easy was the build of this board, guys? Give me a mark out of 10. 10 means it was dead easy. It was the easiest thing in the world. 1 means it was really difficult. It was almost impossible to build. How easy was this to build? While you guys are going to have a look at that, I'm going to give it a 10. It's one switch. Even if you can't solder, it's one switch, eight screws. Job done. Right? I, <laughs> I don't know how it could be anything else other than a 10. I, ju I just genuinely can't see it. Anyway, guys, I'll give you guys another 10 seconds to give your scores, and then we'll go from there. Tell me what you think, guys. Eight screws, yeah, eight screws. Come. Dead easy though. Dead easy. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> it's eight screws for one switch on the board. Take eight screws for sixty switches. Shh. Don't go. Don't come here with your logic. Well, let's see what you guys said. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six tens. Uh, a couple of sevens and a couple of nines. I feel like you guys are giving that a 10 as well. I'm sorry, but I think you guys are giving it a 10. It's dead easy to do. Even if you can't solve it, you can do two pins. Dead simple. Okay, uh, in terms of packaging, how do you guys feel? This is the packaging it came in. Uh, it came in this with a nice bit of milled foam. Uh, this was milled to size. Has a nice little bit of netting here to keep stuff behind, including the PCB. Has the logo on the top. It fits in snugly, and that's super cute fits in perfectly. How guys do you feel? I'm pretty sure it's 10. I mean, ain't gonna get damaged in that. You can chuck it in this and chuck it in your bag and take it to work with you if you really wanted to. Yeah, as you say, James, for what it is, could it be any better? I don't think so. Does it need to be any better? I think I'm gonna give it a 10. I think I'm gonna give it a 10. <coughs> Okay, I'll stop you guys there. Let's see what you guys said. Um, Vogel says 10. Bigfoot says 10. Um, Milfan says 10. Huey says 10. Sendry says 10. Tom says 10. Duckcomb says 10. Krasius says 10. Delise says 10. Talisman says 10. Jeremy says missing bump on slime. Well, we'll come to that later on. We'll come to that later on. Um, Croft says 10. AKB James says 10. Couldn't have asked for better. Um, 5 out of 7, perfect. Less than 10 is just toxic. No PC version. I don't know if there was a PC version or not. I don't think there was. I just got mine in the aluminium because I wanted the red. Uh, to be honest, it just is my favourite colour. I really like it. So I'm going to put you guys down for a 10 as well on that one. 
Okay guys, next thing we're going to jump onto is first impressions. So when I first opened this and I took it out of this box and I showed you this box and I took it out and I showed you what keycap I was going to use and I showed you around the board, what were your impressions? Uh, time scamp, time scamp, time stamps of on the hour. Tell me what your score out of 10 for $70 or 69 69 you think this is. How good is this in terms of first impressions? Tell me what you think about it. I think it's as cute as hell. I'm giving it a 10 as well. So give it what you like, but uh, I'm giving it a 10. I'll give you guys another 30 seconds just while I read Croft's message. He says, I have a question for case design. Obviously, tray mount is a bad choice as it provides uh, stiff spots. However, if you go for one of the superior mounting choices, does securing the PCB, if hot swap, for example, to the plate with screws around the provide, middle provides stiff spots? It can do, yes. So my, the, my view on that is if you're going to connect the PCB and the plate together, just use the switches. There's nothing else, no other reason to need to connect them at all. Okay, stop there guys, 69 out of 10 from Big, uh, Big Fun, I think that's a perfect score. Crysis says 10, everyone else says 10, Syndrome gives it an 11. Um, so yeah, you guys agree that from a first impressions perspective it gets a 10 as well, perfect. Okay, value, here's the big one guys. Is this worth 69 pounds or $69.99? Is it worth it? Give me your scores out of 10. When I consider the cost of it for one key, I think it's probably not. When I consider the cost of it for the actual design, the PCB, the quality of the components, the finish, the fitment, the colour, the anodization quality, everything else. I mean, look how nice that USB port is. Look how nice that is. It's just nice and tight. I'm I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a nine. For this I'm gonna give it a nine for value I think it's really really worth it it's gonna be great for me okay <clears throat> eight says Vogon ten it's nice to enter ten from an big foot six from a duck com Tom says oh yes ten as well uh, Delise says seven Jeremy says seven Crazios says seven bottle of fish says six point five AKB James says seven Sendrum says nine a ten from talisman eight from plume keyboards ten ISO is priceless and Syndrome says ISO out of 10. Um, so I think you guys are probably a little bit lower than me here because of all the 7s and the 6s. I'm going to go uh, and put you as a round 8 because the 10s bring it up. So I'll bring it, put it as a round 8. Okay, so jumping on to style. So, 20, uh, so an 02 timestamp now is what we're looking for. Um, would you rather have 3 ISO or 1 handabyte? bite? Oof, difficult question. Not sure I can answer this one. Uh, style, how good does this look out of 10? So if this is stylish, if you think it looks great, um, give it a mark out of 10. Higher the better. The higher the score, the better you think it looks. The lower the score, the worse you think it looks. How good does an ISO enter look on a macro pad? Is there anything else that should be on a macro pad? Or is it just this? I'm going to give it a 10 because I think it looks great. Let's see what you guys have come up with. Um, <laughs> One hand bite. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Milfan says 10, Delise says 10, Vogon says 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 10. 10, 10, 9, 10. Paddington ISO would look sweet. It would, yes, absolutely. I want to buy another one of these just for the Paddington ISO enter, yes. Even has finger cutouts for picking up. Right, I love finger cutouts for picking boards up. And this has got them. It makes it dead easy to pick it up as a macro pad. Look, I can just grab it, pick it up. It's not going to be too heavy for me to slip off the sides. You know, it, it fits in the palm of your hand. It's great. Um, let's see what you guys come up with then. Uh, another 10 from AKB James. Um, I think, sorry for the nines, but I think you're, you're outvoted here. 10 is the score that it's getting. Uh, quality. So, guys. What do, <laughs> what do I front bezel? No wrist rest. Yeah, it could do with a wrist rest. Uh, let me know what you think of the quality, guys. So, in terms of fitment and finish, when I showed you the machining inside and outside, what do you guys think to this? Look how neat and tidy that logo is. I've got to be honest, <laughs> it's pretty much perfect. There is not a single thing I'm unhappy about with it, uh, so I'm going to give it a 10 as well. Okay, you guys gave it straight tens. You guys didn't even mess around there. It was just tens across the board. Okay, so typing sound. Let me mute the TV for this one. So, 
even that pen holder and crevice lightning this pulls it off um, uh, Croft comes back thanks I agree however what are other options left when you're designing a hot swap PCB in case you can do anything maybe hold the PCB and sandwich mat as well um, so you, you, you can do anything so the, the switch is going to hold the PCB in even if you use uh, like a gasket mount or a sandwich mount of the plate no matter what you do you don't have the, the switches are going to hold on to the, the, the PCB it's going to be fine so I don't think it'd be fine uh, could have done with a pen rail, I guess. It needs a chapstick holder too. Um, okay, so let's 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 listen to the typing sounds, guys. So, there we go. <laughs> what do you guys think? Give me a score out of ten for typing sounds. Um, I'll be honest. It is small, so it's going to sound a little bit echoey. I mean, really, you're only going to tap it once a day or twice a day or whatever. You're not going to use it often. It's actually on the upstroke. Like on the downstroke, it sounds fine. It's the upstroke that's just got a little bit high pitch. So I think that might even be the stab. So. Typing test words per minute on that bugger. Yeah, maybe. Okay, I'm going to give it a 7 for the sound. I think it's okay. I think it's fine. I think, in fact, I, just, I kind of like the sound because it's the, it's like final. It's like, done. 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 So, which for my use case is exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be to turn the PC off and wake it back up. Hibernate and wake it back up. Done. Done. I think it works great. So, <clears throat> let's see what you guys have said. Um... 6, 6, 10, 7, 8, 10, 6, 5, 8, 5, uh, 6, 8, 6, uh, 5, 8. Okay, thanks very much, guys. That's all over the place. Let's just guess at a 7.5. I think you guys are a little bit higher than me. You're a little bit more generous than I am on this one. It's so a 7.5. Okay, type and feel. You guys are going to have to take my word for this. It feels really nice. Uh, the switch feels good. It's nice and smooth. The up and down motion's good. I'm gonna give it an eight, solid eight. Type and feel feels nice. Yeah, great. Innovation then, guys. So you can guys can come back for the innovation score now. How innovative is it to have a macro pad that just uses your ISO keycaps? So for all your ANSI users out there who have ISO keycaps that you've not wanted for many many years now and you've never used, how useful and how innovative does this make it for you? Um, I've got to be honest. I think it's fucking amazing, so I'm gonna go for a I'm gonna go for a ten. I'm gonna give it a ten for innovation because it's great, it's using unused keys in so many people's collections. Um, I don't see how that could ever be a bad thing. Uh, it's a one key macro pad, we don't see those before. I we've never seen finger ledges on a macro pad before to my knowledge. It's USB C, it's got a PC plate, it's top mount, I think it's great. Let's see what you guys have come up with. Gary says, am I high? Only on life, my dude. Uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 10, 11. So the 11 cancels out the 9 from Vogon. Uh, more 10s. Uh, <laughs> Trojan Horse concept created to elevate ISO in North America. Maybe. Doesn't look sturdy enough. I mean, it's pretty sturdy. It's rock solid. Um, so everyone apart from Duckcomb basically gave it a 10. Because Vogon and uh, Sendrums balance it out. So we're going to go with a 10. Okay, on to cool factor now, guys. How cool is it? If you see this on someone's desk, does it look cool? If I show it off on stream, does it look cool? Do you want one of these, even if you didn't buy one? Um, what score on cool factor? How cool is it? How, as the kids say today, how dank is this? Maybe I should change it to dank factor. First keyboard I hit. It'll be the first one I hit every single day, and it was the last one I hit every single night because it's gonna wake up my PC and put it back to sleep. So I'm gonna give this a 10 because it's dank as hell. I really like it. <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, Vogan comes out with 10, so does Bigfoot, so does James. Frisco Melt says 10, Duck Comes says 9, at least a 13. Uh, 1337 says Krasios. Uh, 10 dank out of 10 uh, it says Bigfoot so yeah uh, Huey says 10 10 uh, Pog out of 10 yeah these are all perfect scores uh, an 8.5 out of 8.5 from Jeremy so that's a perfect score as well um, 
<laughs> so dank. 10. Okay, so we're going to go for 10 for that as well. Okay. So there we go, guys. Okay. Um, just to get back to Croft, thanks. Knowing this helps a lot. I'm mostly concerned about how to hold a PCB for input clubs and new beam string hall effect switches. I don't think they will fit that snug, but I guess we'll see them come out. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit different because they don't have pins to hold them in place. I have no idea how that's going to be the case. So we'll definitely need to see how they are connected. Um, and I think we just need to wait and see until we can dismantle one of the boards and rebuild it and have a look at how that's put together. Um, in terms of MX switches, what I said before goes fine. Uh, in terms of those switches, which entirely depends on how snugly they clip on. I don't even know if they're PCB mount switches, I've got to be honest, uh, which means you might have to have a separate mount system for the PCB and the plate to make sure that they actually touch. Don't know. Be something we have to look at. Okay, um, so let's move on to the work score then, guys. So practicality. Give me a score on how practical this is. Is this practical? Is this something... Uh, that you can carry around with you? Is it something that you can take to work? Is it something that's going to be too heavy? Is it going to be light enough? Is it going to mean that you can have a macro on it that you can do what you want with? How practical is this board? How practical is it? For me, it's super practical. It's going to make sure that my PC get turns on and off every night. I'm going to get another one uh, to put uh, the Paddington ISO Enter on. I'm going to try and Cerakote it to match that key set. And that one's going to go with me to work. And that's going to manage all of my stuff at work. Probably uh, delete loads of Jira Kanban boards and stuff like that whenever I press it. Something like that. I don't know. We'll work something out for it. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 10. It's practical as hell. It fits in this little pouch. It fits in your pocket. It fits in your bag. It does whatever you need it to do. Okay, <clears throat> uh, Croft says, I'm thinking of board a uh, sort of plate between the PCB and plate to hold them together, i.e. sandwich mount the PCB. Maybe, yes, There's. I, I didn't, hadn't realised you were talking about those switches, but yes, could well be. So, uh, Vogel says 10, Milfan says 10, Bigfoot says 10, Frisco says 10, Crasio says 10, Huey says 10, Sendrum says 10, Talisman says 10, uh, Gouty... Uh, says I think he's mistyped and put a, put a one and missed the zero. So Gouty says ten, Croft says nine. Uh, that must be out of nine. Um, Delee says nine. Um, again, it must be out of nine. Uh, and the same for Jeremy fifty seven. Um, so I'm going to put ten out of ten Morse code operator. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to give it a 10 from you guys as well. I think that's pretty good. Um, office acceptance. So the next one then, guys, is how acceptable would this be on your desk in the office? If this was just sat there next to your keyboard, is anyone going to notice it? Is it going to fly under the wire? Is anyone going to think it's weird or strange? Or is it just going to be totally accepted? Because I think if I put this on my desk, it's going to sit underneath my monitor. It's going to be hidden away. It's going to be, you know, um, uh, you know, just tucked away. It's going to be... Like, no, I don't think anyone's even going to see it. They're never going to realise it's a keyboard. They're just going to think it's a thing. It's not even going to be a thing. So 10 for me, I think, is the score I'm going to give it here. Um, uh, I think it is VIA compatible. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is, or it's on its way for being VIA compatible. Um, 10, 10, 10 out of 10, 10 plus 10, 10, 10 out of 10, 10. Uh, Sand says Blurk Studio. Thanks for that, Blurk. Makes perfect sense, yeah. Um, Frisco Melt says 10, Delise says 10, Jeremy says 10, Google Plexian out of 10 says Sendrum, nice. Stealth ISO, absolutely good. Uh, AKB James says 10, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is uh, VIA compatible or VIA compatible, I'm sure I've seen that it is. Um, so, yeah, so you guys are giving it a 10 for office acceptance as well. Okay, uh, last one then, guys, last score. What do you guys think from a noise level? How loud is it? Is it too loud? Or is it going to be perfectly acceptable from a volume level in the office? I mean, no one's even going to notice that in the office. I could bash that all day and no one's even going to notice. So, perfect score for me, 10. It sounds like a silent switch and it's not. It's a Hirose Orange, so it's definitely not a silent switch. Can't hear. Just <laughs> syndrome, so it's a 10. Okay, guys, I'll give you another, another five or six seconds to give it a score and then we'll see what we come out with. <clears throat> depends on the switch it does duck come it does it does depend on the switch you are completely correct the switch I have in it is quite a loud switch in other keyboards so it's only loud when I really rap at it but when I press it Captain Salty 9 because I want to be edgy 9 out of 9 is a perfect score man there's nothing wrong with that <clears throat> Yeah, we're just based on how it's built, not on how it could be built. 
Okay guys, so I think again across the board you guys have given it a perfect 10, so let's give that another 10. Okay, perfect. So let's have a look and see how that stacks up. So, uh, from a home score percentage, sorry, from a build score percentage, we got 100% and 100%. Excellent. Uh, from a home score percentage, we got 64 and 63.5, which rounded up, so 91% from built from a home score perspective, and 100% from a work score perspective, which means I gave it a score of 124, you guys gave it a score of 123.5, which is a 95% rating, uh, and that means it gets an A+. It's the first keyboard to get an A+, on the J score, and it gets an A+, from both Jay and the community. So there we go, guys. This is the first A plus board seen on the J score. Does that mean it's the perfect board? Could well be. Could well be. Let's. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> let me just uh, merge these cells and then. Uh, There you go. That is my uh, that's my hot take. Don't let your memes be dreams. There we go. <laughs> is there anything it can't do? Um, I mean, it's a keyboard gaui, so let's be fair. It's not going to fly a plane or anything like that. None of these are. So you know, let's be realistic about this. It's just a very good keyboard. Uh, Anarchy says so. To get the best score in J score, you just have to have a single ISO enter. How would Keycult improve on that? Maybe Keycult should do a full ISO board, so every key is an ISO enter. Maybe, maybe. Um, took my ISO to work and they were so impressed with it that I got instantly promoted to CEO. Wow, that's a really good story. I like that one. According to the score, you need around 6% of these to make the perfect keyboard then. Yes, yeah, so if we had 60 on a desk, would that be good? Uh, it could be 100% with gasket, CF plate and a brass weight. Maybe, maybe we need to see round two with a, a brass Illuminati weight and a CF plate and uh, some sort of gasket mounted solution inside. Um, I suspect the price might go up if we do that though. Um, this board can do anything it wants to, yes. Full ISO board would be like playing whack-a-mole. Extra when? Uh, I don't know, I, I think Sam has got some. I did tell him I wanted to buy another one because I want one for work as well. So, you know, I'm absolutely down to get another one. I, I, I know we've, we, I, I know guys, and I'm going to be honest here, we put it on the J score as a bit of a meme, and I get that. But I don't want that to detract from the fact that this is a damn good bit of kit. I mean, it's really, really cool. It's really clever. It looks great. It feels great. And, you know, it's functional as all hell with QMK compatibility and VIA compatibility. So, you know, I. <sighs> I just want to say thank you to Simon and Pona for running this because it's the best thing I've received so far this year, I think. I really, really like this and, you know, I really want another one. It, it, it's not just because it's nice to enter either, it's because of what it is, it's just, it, it is a meme, it's a complete and utter meme, but it's great. And I say this with hander bodies out of the side of me as well, so, you know, um, for now, I absolutely love this and it is my product of the year so far, uh, especially with the international kit enter on it as well because ISO on ISO for ISO, triple in your ISOs, how bad could it be, you know, it's got to be a good thing. So this is going to become a permanent fixture on my desk, you're probably going to see it sat where the ocelot is now, the ocelot is going to be retired, don't know what I'm going to do with that, um, but yeah, this beauty is, uh, is there, don't let your memes be dreams guys, don't let your memes be dreams. So there we go guys, that is the ISO build done. Let me take away the J score, you don't want to be seeing that anymore, Pfft, gone. Okay, <clears throat> it's a meme done with high quality, absolutely. I need to get in on the extras, yes you do good sir. Uh, in Soviet Russia, ISO types you, absolutely, absolutely. Okay then folks, I think that's going to be it for the stream today. Uh, I'm really sorry we didn't get to finish the Honeyboard build. I will make sure that that's the first thing we do on stream next week because I really, really want to give you guys an accurate sound test uh, so you can hear what it sounds like. And I also want you guys to be able to uh, to see what it looks like with the chocolatier and everything and it's fully put together. Uh, you can kind of get a feel for it here. I know it's not screwed together uh, because the USB port's slightly off. I will fix that. It's going to take me literally five minutes with the Dremel, so there we go. Uh, you can kind of see how the uh, the... the, the Carbon fiber is going to look just showing through the case there. It's going to look fantastic. This color looks great. It works really well with this key set, chocolatier. I'm really, really excited to, to use this as my work board for a while. So, yeah, 
uh, next week on Sunday it will be there it will be ready to go it will be live a couple of quick reminders do check out mykeyboard.eu thank you very much for sending me the Dixie Matt guys I really appreciate this the 9009 Matt uh, and thank you very much for shipping my hand to bite set super quickly really appreciate that thanks to all of our other sponsors as well they've all been fantastic uh, things to look out for this week we will be back on Top Crack on Thursday with this week's show uh, next week the JO2 launches the MyKeyboard is going to launch on uh, next Saturday 10am EST that's going to be when the limited edition uh, Google form goes live so I'll be putting that up uh, 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 on probably earlier than that probably put it up on Thursday or something like that so people can have access to the link and then open the form uh, on uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. EST uh, so I think that's 6 p.m. UK or something like that, or 3 p.m. UK. It's five hours later, uh, and then the Asian one's going to go live with Island KB as well. So thank you very much to uh, to Upas from Canon Keys for being the US vendor for that, and thank you very much to my keyboard for being the EU vendor, and thank you very much to Island KB, Louis, for being the Asian vendor. Uh, the week after that, so on the 8th of February, that's when the full group buy is going to launch that's when you can get the black and cop uh, sorry the black and brass ones and the uh, the space gray and brass ones as well uh, so that's going to open on the 8th at the same time 10 a.m. EST2 hopefully it's going to do well uh, the the success of the JO2 does determine whether we do any more of the J series of boards or whether I move completely on and do something different so I'm hoping it does really rather well anyone who bought an IDB60 earlier on uh, the IDB60 is going to be uh, shipped this week now I don't know exactly which date it's going to be shipped at the very latest it will be next Sunday the reason being is because I've got a couple of funerals coming up I don't know exactly when they are yet I'll find out in the next couple of days but that may impact shipping so all of the boxes are here so all of the IDBs uh, are here they're all ready to go they just need bump ons and screws chucking in the boxes which will take two minutes um, and then just labeling up so after that it's just a case of when I can work around the funerals and, and the day job to get to the, the post office so one of those things uh, the FE form is going to be open for two days, it'll be open up for 48 hours, then invoices will be sent out 12 hours after that, so the very next day the invoices are going to be done. So it'll be open from all day Saturday into Sunday, all day Sunday into Monday, invoices will be sent out by Tuesday. So if you'll, you'll know if you don't get uh, a limited edition uh, prior to the group by starting for the standard edition for the JO2. And there we go guys, that's it. Uh, any experience with the KBD fans PC plate? I haven't, no I'm afraid, I haven't tried that one. Uh, I have got boards with polycarbonate plates in, the excellent, uh, I think Max is running group by from them at the minute if you want something that's uh, perfected for you. Um, so yeah, definitely have a look at that. But the things we talked about earlier on today is the CU65. So Gouty, you're asking to see the CU65. Here it is, my dude. We did talk about it right at the very top of the stream. Integrated plate. There is a stab missing, so otherwise I would have put some keys on it and given it a sound test. Uh, really, really happy with the board. I think it looks great. Uh, USB-C. Uh, really happy with the tolerances here on the uh, uh, on the seams. Uh, come on, camera. Focus. 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 Don't know why the camera's not focusing. Come on, camera. There we go. Uh, really good tolerances on the seams. No bump on on the front. Logo will be good for infill. It looks like it screws together really well. Feels solid. Uh, would have chosen different switches, but yeah, looks pretty damn good. Right, and with that, guys, that is me going to end the stream here. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for being part of the stream today. Uh, I will be back next week on Thursday during the show. If you guys have got any questions in the meantime, please do reach out on Discord, and I'll try and respond as quickly as I can. Uh, but without much further ado, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much, folks. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.